I could very easily go out and buy a soundbar with a subwoofer. I know so because I have one at home, but where's the fun in that? What's going on YouTube? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be putting together a sound system for my garage using an old car stereo. Alright everyone, so here are all the components that I'm going to be using to assemble the garage sound system. Um, I do want to point out that I'm not going to be covering things like how to match the best speakers with your radio, or the best amplifier, or subwoofer for that matter. I do believe that there are a ton of resources here on YouTube that can explain that more in depth and much better than I can. Um, the main focus of this video is actually how I can use this power supply to power the radio and the amplifier uh, to make this work inside of the garage. All right, you guys, so I know that some of you may be wondering why I'm doing all of this. I could very easily go out and buy a soundbar with a subwoofer. I know so because I have one at home, but where's the fun in that? Um, and also, I've had most of this stuff just kind of laying around the garage. For example, I've had this subwoofer for over 10 years. Uh, the power supply I've had for about five years. Uh, the radio is actually off of an old car, which we no longer own. Um, I do have some car stereo uh, speakers, um, but a buddy of mine actually gave me these nice Sony ones. Pretty old, but still pretty good. Um, and then another buddy of mine gave me this amplifier. So why not put all this stuff to use rather than going out and spending some money? All right, so to power this radio and the amplifier, we're gonna be using an ATX power supply from a computer. Uh, now to know what size power supply you need, you can turn around your radio and your uh, amplifier and you can see here that the max output between these two components is going to be around 70 amps. Um, and the computer power supply that I have has a maximum output of 52 amps at 12 volts. Now this is really important because this is how you are going to determine whether or not your power supply is capable of running your two components. Theoretically speaking, this power supply couldn't run these two components. Um, now the nice thing about this amp is I went online and I did some research and I can actually run this amp with just one channel and remove one of the fuses. So therefore now the max output that I'm gonna be using is 40 amps. So this power supply is gonna be more than plenty for these two. So the next thing now to do is kind of prep the power supply in order to wire the stereo and the amplifier together. There are essentially three cables that you want to focus on. These yellow ones are going to be the positive uh, 12 volts and the grounds are going to be these black wires here. Um, if you look at this connector, you can see that the fourth wire from this side of the connector is green. We're going to want to set that aside with a ground wire uh, because this is what's going to make the power supply turn on um, almost as if you hit the power button on your computer. Uh, this power supply I've had for a long time so I don't mind uh, kind of sacrificing it I guess if you will. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get, try to give myself as much length of wire as I possibly can but then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut all these connectors off. I do think this goes without saying, but you know, just for those of you who may have never done this before, please make sure that your power supply is not plugged in while you're cutting all of these wires. Um, once I have all these harnesses cut off, we're gonna go ahead and join together all of the yellows and all of the blacks. Okay, so here is the semi-finished product for the power supply. Um, all I've really done is I took off this wire loom off the main harness for the power supply and then I've kind of separated everything else by color. Here we have the positive 12 volt and then the ground. Um, this is going to be going to the amplifier so that way all these together have a nice thick gauge wire. I did leave behind one yellow and one black. One of these, these are going to be going to the radio. Um, and then this green and this black need to be joined together so that the power supply will turn on. I've seen online some guys where they will just uh, combine the two and then uh, call it a day. That would definitely work for me because I have a switch back here um, that will allow me to turn the power supply on and off as I need. Uh, but I'm actually going to wire these onto a switch just for peace of mind. Um, you know, it, it, the switch will be somewhere easily more accessible than this switch back here. 
um, and then I do have all these other wires kind of just cable managed out of the way uh, what I did is I took all of these uh, same color wires and I coiled them up electrical taped them so that there's no shorting or anything weird going on once the power supply is on and then I just zip tied them to kind of keep them out of the way okay so moving on to the switches uh, this is the only item I purchased for this project um, and it's just five basic switches each rated for 12 volts I believe up to 20 amps um, but I'm only going to use three out of the five one of them will be for this green wire I want to be able to turn on and off the power supply as I please without having to reach to the back of the unit for the most it's going to be running on at all times uh, because I'm going to have another switch uh, connected to this red wire here on the radio harness. This red wire kind of just tells the radio to turn on. Uh, it simulates the key on position in a car, whereas uh, this yellow and the black wire are just positive and ground. The yellow wire is what actually gives the power to the radio, um, but there's always a little bit of power being drawn just to kind of save all of your settings like your Bluetooth settings or your uh, radio stations. And then the third switch will be for this blue and white wire. Uh, this is what tells the amplifier to turn on. Um, basically, every time you turn on the radio, the amplifier will turn on. I do have the settings in the radio where I can go in and turn off the uh, amplifier, but I think it'll be much more convenient to have it on a switch. That way I can just easily access it and turn it off that way. Something that's worth mentioning is if you don't know what all of these wires are for your radio on the wiring harness for the radio, um, odds are there's going to be some kind of schematic on the back of the radio, either on the bottom or I guess on top. Um, so you can always reference that and if not you can always go online and figure out what all of these are so you can wire it up properly. So looking at these switches, I've come to realize that the way these guys work is you have your source coming in right here on the bottom and then your output is going to be this middle piece. This ground is really just to connect the red source and you know the ground coming to whatever ground you are using for this LED. So once you switch it on that LED light should turn on um, and it's worth mentioning because I believe two out of my three switches will not have that light on. Um, because I just need the ground wire and this green wire coming into the power supply um, and then the blue for the amplifier. Uh, the radio one will most likely work because it's going to be 12 volts you know, going in and out and then as long as I have this ground wired up properly um, the little light will work. Which is good for me because odds are I'm going to have the power supply running on at all times so I can have all my settings uh, saved and then this middle one here will be for uh, the amplifier which will also most likely be on all the time unless I decide I don't need that extra base um, and then this one over here will just kind of let me know okay hey your radio was on <laughs> so I don't forget to turn it off all right so with all that said I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring this up and figuring out where I'm gonna put everything and once I have a better idea of that I will get back to you guys Wow, this project is coming out pretty cool. Check this out, you guys. I have that subwoofer down here next to the workbench. I have the two smaller Sony speakers mounted up top on the studs with a couple of screws. Down here, I have the two bigger Sony speakers. But check this out, you guys. Check that out. So the bracket that normally helps secure the radio to your car, I ended up mounting it here in this corner and I did so by just drilling four screws two down here and then two up top. The top two secure the bracket to the workbench. And then the purpose of the bottom ones were just to kind of get a screwdriver in there to be able to drive those in. So for the switches, I ended up cutting the bracket and flipping it over so we couldn't see the logo and so that it only houses three switches. The idea behind that is that if I ever have a future project where I need a switch, I, I still have that mounting bracket with the two other switches. Um, but the bottom one here, this is for the power supply to turn on and off. This middle one here is to turn on and off the amplifier um, with the radio. And then this top one here is for the radio to turn on and off. If we come down here, this is where I have everything mounted. 
So I ended up using the holes that are on the amplifier to mount it to the underside of this workbench. And then it was a little challenging to get that uh, power supply in there uh, because I wasn't sure how I was going to mount it. So what I ended up doing is I ended up just kind of wedging it between the power, uh, the amplifier. And then I found a bracket in my garage just randomly um, that kind of helped me secure it better to the workbench. Um, this It's very important that you leave that bottom fan open. This is what kind of helps bring in air and cool down the power supply if needed. Now, if we look at these wires coming off of the power supply, you can see that I have the two grounds and the positive 12 volt and then this green wire, um, which connect to this harness uh, for the radio. These guys go out to these speakers, uh, but all these other wires come in and also mount to these switches. So this bottom switch is the green and black wire, uh, which will turn on and off the power supply. This middle switch connects the blue and the white wire from the radio harness over to the amplifier. And then this top one connects the positive 12 volts from the power supply and it connects it to the constant 12 volts of the radio harness. And then it ties into this top switch so that way when I turn it on, it will bridge the, the yellow wire and the red wire on the harness to turn on the radio, uh, kind of simulating a key on. And then I also have the other ground coming from the power supply and it ties into the ground off of the radio harness as well as this switch. Now the ground on this switch pretty much is just for the LED up top. It will connect part of the 12 volt coming in and the ground to turn on the LED. I didn't do that for these other ones just because I don't know if these sources are a constant 12 volt. Now I also did add in this bracket here. It's just screwed into the workbench because this bracket here for the radio was not strong enough. It's a little flimsy actually um, and I just wanted this extra just for added security to support the weight of the radio. you guys some moment of truth let's turn on the power supply we should expect no LED there it is but if we come down here we should be able to see that the power supply fan is spinning meaning we have power over here you can see that the LED for the amplifier is turned off which is good now let's fire up the radio give it a second There it is. And now if we come back down here, we can see that the amplifier still has no power, but as soon as we press this button, LED should pop on. All right, so I connected my radio to my laptop through Bluetooth and so now just got to test some music see how it sounds So 
everything appears to be working as it should. All I have to do now is maybe a little bit of cleaning and some cable management. But otherwise, that wraps this video up. Please consider subscribing if you guys want to watch more garage project videos like this one. Hit that like button if you guys found this video useful or entertaining in any way. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day. Thank you.